I'm being so rude. Oh. Would you like some trifle? I would love some trifle, thank you so much. Ooh, it's got a firm resistance to it when it's you dig thick. in. It's thick. It's a thick pud. I didn't know what was under the lake of whipped cream. It's Bickies. Huh? It's a Bicky. I don't know what that is. The, okay. Shall I Oh my god, you? no, Absolutely. you have to stop, otherwise we'll just thank watch this so for much. an hour. <laughs> Welcome to Cord Killers, the show about watching the stuff you love when you want, where you want, however you want. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Brian Brushwood, and I guess that's not true, because what I want to do is watch even more of those delightful Auntie Donna outtakes. Uh, uh, honestly, I had forgotten we were doing the show <laughs> until you said we need to stop watching this or we'll not do the show. Yeah, uh, yeah. if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. Tell us all about it, Bryce. That's right. Uh, our friends Auntie Donna have been posting outtakes and extras from their new Netflix show, Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun, on their YouTube channel. So if you look up Auntie Donna, A-U-N-T-Y, D-O-N-N-A, -N -N uh, you will find it. The show's great. We've talked about it a bunch here. It is streaming now on Netflix. Although it does have new competition. They used to have a monopoly on having a big old house of fun until we got Aya's actor to be in our house. <laughs> That's what I'm here to do. I'm trying to make you forget about that, that you aren't watching outtakes. You're going to be watching these intakes. These are going to be in the takes. <laughs> For the record, that's Tom's soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that important? I don't know, because I, 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 felt, I felt like Bryce wouldn't want I have, to be falsely credited. Yeah, yeah. I've <laughs> also got like, one over here, but I tried not to. <laughs> How do I not have one of those? Oh, I yeah. should have one of those. Yo, now. Bryce's sounds like this. There that's it right. is. That's right. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, Ayaz, good to have you back. How's your series going? It is going well. Go to is.tv slash spite later after this show is done because there's a second episode. It's fantastic. We're making coffee and uh, it is outstanding. I got to say it is the, the number one cooking show on the internet for the spite division. But still, number one. Mm -hmm. Number in one the spike in spike category. Yeah. 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 True. <laughs> Excellent. Well, congratulations on that. Let's move on to the primary Thank target. You. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you all know about this story. The 90-day window not looking like it's going to survive the pandemic. Warner Media announcing last Thursday that its entire slate of movies in 2021 will debut on HBO Max in 4K HDR at the same time they appear in theaters. That means Dune, Suicide Squad, The Matrix 4, Godzilla vs. Kong, the whole slate. Each movie will be available on HBO Max for 30 days. Theaters can run the movies as well and may continue to run them after the 30 days if they like. Coincidentally, HBO Max just stopped offering its seven-day free trial. They're doing like a six-month, if you purchase six months at once, discount. Uh, don't forget HBO Max not yet operating on Roku, but Executive Vice President and General Manager of Warner Media's direct-to-consumer products, Andy Forstell, said in an interview Thursday that they will get the deal done. It's the first time they've said something positive about Roku in the, in the press like that. Warner Media had already decided to do a simultaneous theater and HBO Max release with one movie, you recall, Wonder Woman 1984. That's still happening. In that case, theaters were given a larger cut of ticket sales in exchange for the permission to do the one-off, which is now no longer a one-off. And Variety reports that there is no extra cut of ticket sales for the rest of the movies in 2021. Chair and CEO of Warner Media Studios, Ann Sarnoff, said, quote, most theaters in the U.S. will likely operate at reduced capacity throughout 2021. With this unique one-year plan, we can support our partners in exhibition with a steady pipeline of world-class films, while also giving moviegoers who may not have access to theaters or aren't quite ready to go back to the movies the chance to see our amazing 2021 films. So she's saying, we could have held all the movies back and you'd get nothing. At least this way, theaters, you get something. And people who can't get to theaters or don't want to go to theaters can still watch it. Chief Operating Officer Warner Brothers Picture Group Carolyn Blackwood said, quote, we don't think we're changing the economics of these movies any more than the pandemic has. So she's like, this, this was all going to be messed up anyway. Now, uh, here's, here's the scoop from the theater side of things. Uh, we, we have apparently Warner not telling anyone they were doing this until shortly before the announcement on Thursday. AMC CEO Adam Aaron said in response to the announcement that, quote, 
Warner Media intends to sacrifice a considerable portion of the profitability of its movie studio division to subsidize its HBO Max startup. And also, we will do all in our power to ensure that Warner does not do so at our expense. Regal Theater owner Cineworld released a statement saying it plans to reopen cinemas in Q1 and believes Warner Brothers, quote, will look to reach an agreement about the proper window and terms that will work for both sides. So theaters have not agreed that this is a done deal. They're going to try to negotiate more. Meanwhile, in an interview with The Washington Post, Warner Media parent company at and CEO John Stanky said this could be a lifeline for theaters. He pointed out that once people go back to theaters, you may see all the studios release a bunch of movies at once, creating a bubble where the movies don't make as much as they would be expected to otherwise. And Stanky added that the company realized, quote, we're going to have some really good content here that's spoiling and can be used for other purposes. So he's saying we're giving theaters movies before they would have got them otherwise so they can make some money. We we are not going to release all our movies at once when everybody else does because they won't make as much money then anyway. And some of these movies would be too stale by the time people are back in theaters. Mike Fleming from Deadline said that Legendary Pictures also jumping in on this, saying they had no advance notice for last week's announcement and that both Dune and Godzilla vs. Kong, which Legendary made and uh, Warner is distributing, uh, maybe shouldn't be part of this plan. And Variety reports Legendary is considering legal moves. And just one more thing before we kick this around. Uh, what is Disney going to do? Because you remember Universal has its own deal for a, a windowing. Warner Media playing hardball, just throw, throwing windowing out the window here. Disney's got an investor day coming up later this week, December 10th. You might hear something more about their approach to the window then. I don't want to be bombastic and overstate this, but I think conservatively, so I'm not going to say biggest story over the entire lifetime of this show and the previous uh, predecessor, but definitely a top five media moment. This is the biggest, yeah, boldest yeah. decision in this space we've ever seen. And I think it's very, very savvy in, in a world where... HBO Max, regardless of how good its catalog is, it's entering very late to a very crowded market of over-the-top services. This is the kind of out-of-the-box insane move that all of a sudden made it leap from a fifth or sixth tier also ran to top three, like to jump over Hulu and to jump over Amazon Prime. It's extraordinary. Now, uh, and the, and the, the, the quote-unquote best part is they were already screwed. Like they said, we, we ain't doing nothing worse than what the pandemic's already doing. What they are doing is they're setting a beginning date and an end date. They're not picking winners and losers on their slate. And most importantly, they've given up on trying to time the market. Tenet showed that it's a fool's errand to try to time the market. You can't predict when people are willing to come back. So they just said, best of all worlds, day and date, come at us and they at least have the benefit that if they are uh, robbing from their right hand pocket they're robbing to put that money in their left hand pocket and so yes i understand theaters are going to be very upset with it but you know who's going to love this shareholders investors everybody who loves reliability the same engine that brings us sequel after sequel after sequel now brings us an all-in-one decision for the entire year that makes sense and makes HBO Max a player. And yes, they're going to miss out on imaginary revenues that they might have made, but it's a reliable decision that they've made. And I think the maybe one of the boldest winning plays I've seen in our entire run of this show. I mean, the last time I was here, we were kind of joking about the confusion with HBO Max and the other names for their streaming services, which is now just HBO at this point. But this kind of deal... Uh, this kind of schedule definitely gives HBO Max a real identity on top of everything else. Yeah, everybody's got everything else streaming. That's great. Yeah, they have movies that might go to theaters like Netflix has that every now and then for uh, its own, at least in the past. But now HBO Max is the home of first run Warner Brothers, huge named movies. And that will really get a lot of people there. Now, the question is whether this will continue you know, past the pandemic or not. I don't really know because I would imagine that what HBO Max is going to run into is a piracy problem because it's one thing if you're getting cams of cam footage of some movie that was out somewhere overseas, 
It's another if you're doing some kind of screen ripping of the actual movie. So I'm really curious how that's going to factor into things with it, this. Uh, then uh, again, that's uh, always been an issue. Uh, I was about to say on, on that line, it's one of those things we've talked about how uh, convenience trumps fidelity. And a lot of times the pirated version of a movie is the highest fidelity version, but it's just enough of a pain in the butt to pirate it that it's easier to just go ahead and stream it from Netflix. So as a result, you know, when it's easier, the easiest solution is to just sign up for the service and watch all you want. I got to feel like the, the piracy won't be as big of a deal as we might otherwise fear. And I also love the idea of the, and, the 30 day window that you're getting this for a month. It's not HBO Max is giving away the, the store. They're like, look, guys, uh, you get this for a little bit. But if you really want to have that group feel and you want to experience with people and popcorn, and that whole real like the old, you know, when you're laughing together, it's it's not exactly the same. So I don't think you can completely destroy theaters. I don't think it's possible. Maybe once things are there's a, uh, an actual vaccine, people will come back together for this stuff because some of that some of that experience like this thing of the whole mcu some of that those moments are meant to be watched all together and this is kind of a strange way to do it yeah and i think that gets lost in a lot of the conversation about this is uh it's not a zero-sum game it's not if you put a movie on online no one will go to the theater uh, it's e even in the perfect day when there's no virus to contend with, there are people who will go to theaters because of what you're saying. I, as I want to be experiencing my favorite movie that I'm really excited about with a crowd. I want to, I want to have that opening day excitement. There, there are a number of people who do that. In fact, we're about to find out, I think in the next couple of years, what the Delta is there. there. There's been a lot of fear from theaters that that Delta was big. I've always been skeptical that it is that big. I think a lot of people will go to theaters anyway, rather than watch it at home. Already, my wife and I are talking about how we're too, it's too bad that we can't go see Wonder Woman in the theater uh, because theaters are closed in Los Angeles because that would have been nice. That would have been fun to do uh, and, and we'll watch it at home, but it would have been better on the big screen. I, I think that's still going to be a thing. And I think these kinds of moves are going to help show what kinds of movies can still draw a big crowd on opening day and what kinds of movies in the future should just go straight to, to digital and stay there like, like Netflix does with theirs. And Honestly, I you know there is a delta of some sort, even if it's smaller than I think people estimate. So I have fewer theaters in the future. I think that's just true too. So two things really stick out in my mind. One is uh, the F word. First, first, first. Uh, it matters that Warner Media. I mean, somebody had to. Whoever went first on this bold move was going to capture all the press and the attention. When. Disney announces which of the winners and losers it's going to pick for this year, or if it decides that everything goes straight to Disney Plus, it will be somebody also following in the footsteps. I mean, it's uh, I, I can't overstate enough the power of, of being first for this kind of thing. Uh, and then uh, uh, second of all, I forgot the second thing. So I made that classic mistake of starting a list and See, not being able to finish it. See, when you go first... Everybody forgets what's second. Brian even forgot exactly. his second point That's because right. going That's first was so That's how little important. going yeah. second uh, uh, matters. <laughs> uh, 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 I, oh, man. Uh, I, 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 never mind. I got nothing. Oh, uh, 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 the 30-day the window also <laughs> helps to guarantee that it'll be part of the cultural gestalt. The same thing mm -hmm. that people love about the movie theaters is that everyone's talking about the same thing at the same time. And nowadays, Twitter really is kind of the premiere night experience that everybody, it won't quite be the same as going to a red carpet event, but watching all of the chatter and seeing, you know, uh, people praise your movie because, you know, the actors, they're, they're going to be on Twitter. They're going to receive direct messages saying, hey, I really liked you in, in this thing and so on. So, um, uh, oh, I did, I did it, I did it. I remembered my point. Cold Turkey. HBO Max, Warner Media had the wherewithal to quit the 90 day window cold turkey. No weaning off of it, no little bit here, little bit no there. 17 day window like Universal. Yeah. They said cold turkey, we're going to break our addiction to, to the theaters. And yes, it will be well, deeply unpleasant, but we will emerge so much stronger on the other side of this. There, there's a three part, uh, 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 there's three, two parts leading up to this step. This is the third of three steps, the first tenant, and they didn't like what they saw. So the second part was, let's see what negotiating with the theaters about day and date feels like. So they did that with Wonder Woman. They said, what do you need? And the theater said, well, we'll do this. And after those two experiences, what they took, what they learned and they said, you know what? 
I think we can get a better deal if we just move on our own. Don't negotiate. Don't try to put it out, you know, in different places like we did with Tenet. Let's just let the, the leverage we have is HBO Max. It's good for us because it'll drive activations. And uh, we can always compromise and computers later, but it'll be a better deal than the one we got with Wonder Woman. So I, I think this is some hardball negotiation with theaters too. Yeah, also we've got this HBO Max situation where I don't think their app is on Roku yet, so they might want to get on that immediately since they are going to be getting tons and tons oh, of yeah, subscribers. No, I, no, with... I mentioned that. Is they've said, like, we're going to make that happen. It's the first yeah. time they've commented on it in public, right? They've really got to. With Wonder Woman 1984, that's going to drive a ton of subscriptions. And then you've got, I, I mean, look, I, I don't know how much I really wanted to watch Godzilla vs. Kong, but if it's at home, sure, yeah. why not? Right. And I'll take my old AMC Stubbs premiere, whatever the heck it was called, the monthly thing that I used to go to the theater all the time. Like, I'll just watch this this thing at home and I can pause it and I can put on captions if I want. That's something else that, by the way, don't do that with first run movies because you'll get spoiled because they'll have somebody in the dark and they'll be like, oh, it's the killer and his name is Bob. Oh, like, well, yeah. you see that. <laughs> so don't put on captions unless you are willing to get the movie spoiled. But I'm really excited about getting to see the stuff at home because I, it actually gives me a great excuse to finally buy a 4K projector. Well, and, and I didn't have 4K, so I'm going to get 4K now. That's exactly my ne the next thought I was going to offer is how many people do you think mean to get around to buying a new television, but now their explicit thought is, I'm going to get that 4K TV. It's going to come with the Roku built in. I'm going to set it up on Christmas morning, somewhere around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Kids will calm down. We're all going to gather the family around and watch Wonder Woman. It's going to be chef's kiss great. Like, I, I, I can't even begin to guess how much money is, is going to be moved specifically for that fantasy i'm sorry if i'm amc theaters i would be putting tvs up for sale on my website right now that seems <laughs> like a perfect move right yeah <laughs> you've got some empty theaters you can store them in ship them out to people uh, that day yeah slap sticker on it uh yeah this is this is huge uh Anyone knows what the fallout will be. Anyone who tells you they know what's going to happen at the end of 2021 with all this. In fact, anyone who knows what's going to happen as this rolls out over the course of the year uh, is probably lying to you because I think the theaters are scrambling on the phones right now saying, come on, you got to give us something. We're not going to show these unless you give us something. Uh, but I doubt Warner media will roll this back. Legendary sending a letter. I think, is going to take some managing, but I don't think they have a lot of legal maneuvers there uh, to try to stop this. It would it would be a breach of contract if they did to say, uh, you know, we you're hurting our brand uh, by putting us on streaming. We want to have a whole Godzilla franchise, a whole Dune franchise, and now you're minimizing it because it's not in theaters. It'd be really hard to get a court to decide that that does breach a contract, but then I haven't read the contract, so I don't know. Uh, maybe it would, but I'll be curious which theaters end up signing up for it and what they get in order for it and what the attendance will be because sure, Wonder Woman is going to happen, you know, California's in lockdown and there's a surge nationwide, but by February, we may start seeing the effect of vaccines. People may start to feel a little more comfortable going out. Certainly by the end of 2021, we'll see that. And it'll be interesting to see then how many people decide to go to the theaters because they can uh, versus play watching it on HBO Max, which a lot of them may have already paid for. Yeah, yeah. Somebody asked in the, ch in the chat, do the theaters have any leverage? Because I'm also thinking about this. It's like, what if, what is AMC going to do? But like, oh yeah, we're not going to show you the DC Extended Universe. We're not going to show you uh, Godzilla 3. We're not going to show you this. Stuff. Like, do the theaters have any real power in the situation? Well, they lose they lose some ticket sales if they do that. Mm -hmm. So they're already giving up money by putting it on HBO Max. They lose more money if AMC doesn't show it at all. Not a lot, but some. Uh, and the other leverage they can say is, and we won't show any of your movies after 2021, right? That would be the bigger leverage of like, once people are back in the theaters, we won't show your movies and then you really will lose. Well, you know, one thing that will never have a window uh, is always available and you can decide how much you want to pay for it is, is us, Brian. Yeah. You know, I gave a lot of credit to the HBO max folks, to Warner media for having the bold vision of saying, you know, day and day for everything. If you want to show it in the theater, fine, who cares? We're just going to put out people. We're going to put out our content to where the people want to watch it. 
Then I suddenly realized we had that model like 11, 12 years ago. Ah. We've been doing that ever since. And we're funded by you guys over at patreon.com slash cord killers. Just a buck an episode. That's all we ask. You get your own RSS feed that includes all of the spoiler in time, all of this show. And of course, our super secret clubhouse that we hang out after every episode with our after talk segments. Thank you to the over 1000 bosses keeping us loud, live and independent over at patreon.com slash cord killers. Let's talk about how to watch. Discovery will launch its streaming service Discovery Plus in the United States January 4th, 2021 for $4.99 a month for the ad supported tier or $6.99 a month for the ad free tier. Discovery is also going to partner with Verizon, Sky and Telecom Italia to give subscribers access with their existing subscription. So Verizon, you'll, you'll get it if you pay for a phone subscription, for instance. Discovery says it'll have 5.2 million subscribers at launch. It expects it to be in the tens of millions by the end of next year. Uh, Discovery, if you remember, owns Discovery Channel, HGTV, and Food Network. Uh, it will include content from all of its networks, as well as from networks uh, with its partner, a and &E. uh, a and &E is going to offer shows from its networks like History Channel, Lifetime, etc. Service expects to offer 55,000 episodes from 2,500 sh shows at launch in the U.S. And reportedly, uh, according to Deadline, Discovery brings in about $7 per subscriber between affiliate fees and advertising right now on cable, but expects Discovery Plus to be able to bring in seven to nine dollars per subscriber with advertising and subscription fees. Discovery Plus will have content exclusive to the service, including David Schwimmer's narrated wildlife series, Mysterious Planet, a 90 day fiance spinoff, and a competition show on Topiary with Michael Yuri and Martha Stewart. Uh, no word on what platforms it'll launch apps on, uh, but they said it will launch on all the major platforms. So. You know, expect it to be everywhere but Roku and get in a fight or something. Uh, when it comes to a lot of these services, uh, we talked about, you know, showing up late to the party and that being a problem. But but the niche programming that Discovery does, uh, I feel like this is not one that'll barely make it to the bottom of a lot of people's list. I feel like this is the beginning of the time type of thing that people are going to have to like, well, I got to lose something. I'm going to cancel Hulu for a while. I'll cancel this other thing for a while and then, and then get back to it or maybe not. Yeah. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people complain at these, at these announcements uh, because they're still in the mindset. People are still in the mindset of, I have to have everything. And it's like, you don't, you can, you can sign up for discovery plus during shark week and then cancel it the next week. Uh, you can, you can be like somebody who's like, I am into every food network show. I will sign up for discovery plus and realize I never watch anything on Hulu. I don't need it. I can sign up when Handmaid's Tale comes back around. I mean, that is the thing to complain about is, gosh, I wish there was an easy way to manage these. Not, I wish there was fewer choice, right? We just need to get used to the fact that you're not paying for stuff you don't watch anymore. You have control over it. You know, I, I had absolutely no interest in this story when I first read about it. I had no interest as Tom was talking about it. I had little interest as Tom continued. But when he mentioned 90 Day Fiance, <laughs> my <laughs> eyes lit up. Now that piece of of show is <laughs> that so, <piece> of show. <laughs> it is so so addicting and so bad they have so many spinoffs they have a show where the people who are on the show are watching the show and then talking back to tw tweets and stuff it is addicting it is terrible it is garbage tv and seven bucks a month ain't bad for it then because <laughs> i could watch they have like six 90 day fiance spinoffs already but that number might be real by the way it's at least three so this is basically a $7 90 day fiance pass. So the only thing that's really messing up this whole launch is the fact that people can't really fly anywhere, but that's a whole another issue with the pandemic. So well, 90 day fiance plus can't wait. This is also an unusual offering in that uh, I generally think of most of the programming I watch on Amazon prime Hulu and Netflix is all fairly appointment based viewing. Like I'm going to watch this. I'm going to give it my full attention and I'm going to judge this hour long on its merit. Uh, all these channels, HGTV, Man, oh man, I could think of nothing worse to give my full attention to. I could think of nothing better to have on all day long, 24 hours a day. That room is messy. Now it's clean. That house is broken. <laughs> now it's nice. All day Which long. of these three houses should I buy? <laughs> the best one. So, right. yeah. Like hour for hour, this might be one of the best uh, 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 by the hour options you have. 
I see so many people in the chat room saying, who is this for? Who would buy this? And, I'm, and that's the beauty of where we're going is we're getting niche services. There are there would not be a discovery company if there weren't lots of people who like this kind of programming. They're not you people in chat room. That's fine. They don't have to be. Uh, this is not for you. So you don't need to buy it and you shouldn't buy it. But for the people who like 90 Day Fiance or like Martha Stewart stuff or like House Hunters or Property Brothers, uh, this this is a great deal at $5. You're absolutely right because these are the kinds of shows, Brian, that people just put on. I mean, if you watch HGTV on cable, they just show the same show over and over and again for hours because they know that's how people watch their stuff. Yeah. So having said that, are you going to get it? Talking to me? Hey, all of us. I don't think so. Here's what's interesting. I don't watch enough of this kind of program to justify the $5 a month extra. But that's because when I want it, I've got it on AT&T TV now. I don't know how much longer I'll need AT&T TV now. I mean, there's a, there's a few live sports pieces in there. Occasional other live things in there that I, I kind of need it for. But this shows me the a big thing that I used to always want is, well, I want my service to have HGTV because sometimes I like to watch House Hunters. If suddenly I can do this instead and I can replace at and TV now with something considerably cheaper uh, by plugging in a couple other services, I don't know. I think this is really interesting because we are seeing a la carte TV happening. And this is a big part of that. Can I, can I offer a bit of a dark thought? Um, uh, I n intended to get around to watching all those Apple TV Plus originals and all that stuff. It took me getting COVID, and all of a sudden, like, I watched all of the back catalog. For anybody getting COVID, this seems like the type of 7 to $10, or say, you know, $7 decision that you make, and it's just like, two weeks, let's go. Clean up those properties, <laughs> rebuild that those houses. Worst. That is the worst tagline for any streaming company ever. If you got the COVID, I, I, watch Discovery I, I, Plus. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I, this is not marketing advice. This is this is <laughs> tactical analysis. I'm just I'm just saying this is uh, uh, if I, I'm buying the stock. He's, in this. he's not Sorry. suggesting they change the name to Discovery Plus. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, oh, Tom, but never change. I got We're not gonna do better than that. Uh, but if you are laid up for any reason, yeah, it does seem like the, the kind of thing. And, and here's the thing people need to get used to. We're not used to this yet is you can turn it on for a month and then you can turn it off. Uh, you're, you're right. Having different apps and keeping track of where they are and which shows are on, which is annoying, but we're getting, this is the next phase that we're moving into is getting platforms that handle that prime video wants to be it. Apple TV plus wants to be it. Roku wants to be it. Uh, we're developing those solutions. Now, once we get there, this will end up being a much better world that you have more control over. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about what to watch in under surveillance. I like this. YouTube is streaming the first 19 James Bond movies for free in the United States in partnership with MGM. The movies cover all the Bonds from Sean Connery all the way up to Pierce Brosnan. No Daniel Craig. He's Sony, uh, but all the MGM Bonds. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's something in the cultural gestalt right now, because out of nowhere, my 12 year old uh, right before she turned 13 was like, uh, hey, mom. Uh, James Bond. Show me, uh, pick one of the old ones. Let's, was let's it when that. Sean Connery died? Is it, or was it even before that? Um, I, I think it was unrelated to that, but but I wouldn't be surprised if it was somehow, um, you know, echoes of that. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. It just seemed to be on, on I've seen it bubble up elsewhere. So, so this seems like a, a move whose time is right. Oh, James Bond, this is that uh, Jason Bourne ripoff. I've heard of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like a non-funny version of Austin Powers. I don't get it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Takes itself so seriously. Uh, new trailer is out for Wonder Woman 1984, uh, focusing on Diana's relationship with her family and with Steve Trevor. Warner Media also announced last week that Wonder Woman 84 will be the first movie to stream in 4K 60 frames per second on HBO Max, and it premieres December 25th. Yeah, that's going to be a big day. <laughs> Happy I Wonder Woman, Miss. Yeah, right. Uh, the BBC released a trailer for the Doctor Who holiday special to be called Revolution of the Daleks. It will air New Year's Day 
Often they do them on 25th, sometimes the 26th, and sometimes New Year's. This year it's on New Year's. The episode features Captain Jack Harkness and will mark the final appearance of the Doctor's current group of three companions. Do you do you think that uh, that they, they felt like they were up against a phenomenon with Wonder Woman or totally unrelated, do you think? I think it's unrelated, uh, be, but they did just announce the date, not after Wonder Woman 1984 was announced. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Interesting thought. <laughs> uh, Netflix released a teaser for a comedy event called Death to 2020 from the makers of Black Mirror. Uh, we don't know anything else about what will be in it other than the actors Samuel Jackson, Hugh Grant, Lisa Kudrow, Kumail Nanjiani, Tracy Ullman, Samson Kayo, Leslie Jones, Diana Morgana, Kristen Milati, and Joe Keery. And they don't even have a date. It's coming soon. Well, uh, I, I, this is me reading tea leaves, so so don't, don't uh, believe me. But it seems to me that if it's from the folks who make Black Mirror, uh, there's a reason that they're not using the Black Mirror brand you know so it's I don't... comedy black mirror is not comedy well, I, I guess that so, would be uh, it well I, I don't why know. do I, comedy i guess it just i kicks i the can down the road. Uh, okay no, 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 no i i, 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 I I'm heading in the wrong direction. Uh, you think it's bad? You think that's why? No, I'm trying to guess what it is uh, and and uh, why. Because in general, whenever somebody can use a successful name, they tend to wedge it in there, whether it matters or makes sense or not. So I'm trying to figure out how far outside of the Black Mirror uh, ecosystem, because there have been funny episodes uh, and cute episodes of Black Mirror. So sure, like, how far true. does this have to go to where some money grumbling cynic can't you know it says okay we're not going to use the words black mirror except for created by the team or whoever uh, did you really want to see an episode of black mirror called you know black mirror colon 2020 i mean we've we've already maybe it. that's Death, it but it, it's not just that it's funny it's it's because it's present day or or yeah, uh, too, it's the future. here's my guess is that all of these people are playing themselves and and that would be mm. outside of you know black mirror even with when it's funny or cute it's definitely in universe fictional vignettes and nobody plays themselves uh and so cuz cuz the teaser hammers away that this is the black mirror folks but this year is even more black mirror than a black mirror episode black mirror black like they're not shying away from using the name black mirror for sure right uh, a couple other notes here. Netflix will create a Korean version of its hit La Casa de Papel, a.k.a. Money Heist. Uh, the Spanish language version of that show is in production for its fifth and final part. Uh, but we're going to get a Korean version as well. And Nielsen published has is, is been publishing weekly rankings of streaming series based on the amount of minutes consumers stream of a show during the week. The rankings cover Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Hulu, and Disney+. And the ratings announced last Thursday had The Queen's Gambit at number one. Uh, followed by The Office on Netflix, The Mandalorian, Disney Plus, Shit's Creek on Netflix, and Criminal Minds on Netflix. In fact, it was pretty much all Netflix shows except for The Mandalorian. When we, uh, and of course, The Mandalorian was the what the number one franchise per that uh, survey that we mm -hmm, covered a mm -hmm. week or two ago. Um, uh, uh, Nielsen, man, I really wish that I could see the bottom part of those Nielsen lists. They always publish the the top however many, but it's like- I The would, top 20, yeah. I would just love to see how far down uh, to see our friends Auntie Donna on there or something. You, you can, you just have to pay Nielsen a lot of money. That's what I figured. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out that that's literally what they are, are information brokers. <laughs> They're collecting watch time. That's what they're doing. They're basically turning into yeah. YouTube with this. The analytics, I like it. It's like, okay, people really watch this one scene for a long time. You go to studio.nielsen.com, this would be great. Oh, I'm sure. Because Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, none of them give this information out. And so people wanting to either sponsor Hulu or maybe pitch Disney+, Plus or Netflix uh, may find that valuable. Competitors might find it valuable. It is, in fact, not... Everybody's like, oh, Nielsen's dead. There's no more TV. But... Nielsen is just good at stats. I mean, good. You can we can argue about whether they're good, but their business is stats, and the business of stats is not going away. Yeah. All right, let's talk about what we've had our eyes on. Something you've been watching, Ayaz. You want to tell us about? Well, other than Spike Kitchen, the number one internet cooking show in Spike Division, right. uh, there is Doom Patrol on HBO Max. I've been watching this uh, because it's there. And the first season was uh, pretty good. And then the second season is really losing us because there's a character introduced and we could not care less about this character and it's turning really, really crappy. And so I don't know if I'm going to finish Doom Patrol, but it's a really good first season. I'll give you that. And Alan Tudyk is fantastic in his role as Mr. Nobody. Watch the show, quit after season one and move on with your life. 
I watched the first episode and it took me several weeks. And then I ended up liking it once I made it all the way through. I watched the second episode all in a go and it was fine. I'm having a hard time getting hooked by it though. Yeah, I mean, it's not the typical CW Arrowverse melodramatic stuff. So that's kind of a nice thing about it. And I, I'm really surprised at how, I guess, big budget it looks comparatively, considering it was a DC Universe property to start with. So it looks good. The, there's a lot of humor in it. I, I really liked the jokes. And I liked, I liked a lot of the comedy and the self-referential or the, the meta-ness when it comes to like, yeah, this is weird. We know this is weird. So we're going to go along with it. And um, if you think it looks like the X-Men, guess what? Doom Patrol came out before the X-Men. So that's a whole other thing that you can look up online later. <laughs> uh, so I finally made it to season two of Community with the family. And uh, uh, boy, you could really see the gear shift on there, man. They, they are hitting their stride. Um, but I... On a dare, I wanted to, you know, because the kids, the kids are young enough that they, they just, uh, they cringe every time Chevy Chase shows up playing Pierce. And I was like, hey, man, do you want to see something wild? You want to see Pierce be cool as hell? And they're like, nah, -uh, nah, -uh. and they're like, you mean the actor? Okay. So I, so I rent, I spend $3.99 to rent Fletch and, and I make them watch the first like 10 or 15 minutes. And I'm the one who's blown away because Fletch is straight up Jeff Winger. And it's so weird to watch, like, like, like I mean, it's like, I, I guess that's one of the, there's, there's a thing that you can know, but then after immersing yourself in, a, in, in the main character, Jeff Winger on uh, Community to just, you know, the timing, the beats, it's like, this was, this was studied and duplicated. Uh, the, for all I know, the script literally said the word, and then Fletch says, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Did the kids end up liking Fletch? Uh, no, they wanted to go back to community. <laughs> they're all like, <laughs> like, they almost got interested when the guy says, I have bone cancer, kill me. And they're like, what? And then and they're like, okay, dad, can we go back to community now? Ah, uh, well, um, I ended up uh, catching up on the flight attendant on HBO Max. Uh, again, sort of, sort of, I was like you with Doom Patrol because it was there. Like just put on the first episode not even when it premiered, because it had premiered over the Thanksgiving weekend. It was the next weekend, mm -hmm. next week, and just got sucked right in. Uh, Kaylee Cuoco uh, from, you know, um, uh, Big Bang Theory Big and Bang Harley Theory. Quinn is is the main character. Uh, she's a flight attendant who wakes up in a hotel in Bangkok uh, next to a dead body and doesn't know why, doesn't remember anything. Uh, and the whole thing is, a, is kind of a, a madcap mystery, very... In its execution, modern, but in its trappings, kind of, and kind of uh, an homage to those '60s, you know, action uh, mystery uh, films. In, in its aesthetic, maybe, uh, but it's really good. Uh, I'm having a ball. It's, it's, it's a straight up, you know, stupid mystery. Uh, if those aren't your thing, then you're not going to like it. But uh, I'm, I'm having a blast. It's well shot and well acted, and I'm enjoying it. I'm looking forward to good watching for, that one. That was another one. Yeah, that's good on my list. Good for HBO Max. Uh, hey there, Bryce. What should we be on the lookout for? Hey, I got a pick for you guys this week. Uh, this was actually our cold open on Court Killers here a few weeks ago. It is the uh, Hulu Christmas film Happiest Season. Uh, I, I think this is super cute. This is uh, 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 kind of your standard, hey, two people in a relationship go to a family gathering and things go wrong kind of story. But the twist is that the two young lovers are women. Uh, and Mackenzie Davis's character uh, is not out to her parents. I, I thought it was uh, a, that's a, a great take on what is otherwise a pretty standard uh, Christmas comedy. I think uh, it's it's got a lot of heart. It's very sweet, um, and it's not it's not too heavy. You know, there's 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 some drama there. There's some comedy, uh, but but overall, I think this is a, a really sweet film that uh, uh, anybody can enjoy. Uh, this is happiest season on Hulu. anybody anybody heard of this? Anybody know about oh this? Yes. Gosh. In Only fact, because I we... embarrassingly <laughs> insisted that it had Aubrey Plaza in it the other day, and it now does. I realized that was Mackenzie. Oh, it does. She's Whew. a All right. supporting <laughs> character. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't see her in the trailer. I was like, oh no. Yeah, she's in there. Dan Levy's in there. Uh, Kristen, uh, uh, Chris, Kristen Stewart. No, not Kristen Stewart. The other yep. Kristen. Yep. Yeah, Kristen Stewart is is the other lead actress. Uh, 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 what's her name from Community is in there. The blonde Allison Brie. Allison Brie's mm. in there. Look at that. We're all helping. I as <laughs> Sternberger. <laughs> Mary Sternberger's in there. That's right. Uh, Dan Levy from Schitt's Creek is from Schitt's Creek. Yeah, yep. fantastic. Just great. This I guess was supposed to be in theaters this holiday season. Turns out, nah, not, not gonna work. So uh, I think this is a lot of fun. Happiest season on Hulu. Uh, and if you've got something we should be on the lookout for, email us courtkillers at gmail.com.
Do that and then do what Brian's about to tell you to do. Hey, man, uh, uh, two quick things. First of all, if you want to get a big, old, fat desktop system or a laptop, go visit our friends over at doghousesystems.com slash rogue. That's R-O-G-U-E. You'll get something extra on there, and you'll be paying them back for them loaning us all these amazing systems. But if you want to get something small, not a giant desktop computer, so if you want awesome gifts to give your loved ones, uh, we got all price points over at scamstuff.com, where we just dropped the prices on everything, and we sold out of everything so hard hard that we had to add 10 new things of which some have already sold out again. <laughs> We're all sold out of lucky socks already. Uh, lots of really, really good gifts. I'm really proud of the offerings this year. Head on over to scamstuff.com. Become the king of stockings. Yo, Let's move on to the front lines. Front lines. The information's sources say Warner Media is discussing launching two new streaming services. A paid CNN service would feature deep dive original series and international content. That newsy service would launch in 2021. And a free ad supported stream uh, would offer entertainment content from TBS and TNT aimed for 2022. Uh, on DTNS, when we talked about this today, I, I was understanding of the CNN service. It's kind of like almost like a documentary service, right? Like the 80s, 70s shows on CNN are real popular. So a paid version of that kind of stuff, very niche, kind of like the Discovery service. But I was at a loss about TBS and TNT until I talked it out and realized that this could be the Pluto or Zumo of Warner Media, the free tier where you show a bunch of stuff from TBS, TNT, and others that gets you to then want to pay for HBO Max. Oh, and of course, if it's ad supported, then maybe there's no way to buy an ad free version of this service, but it comes right. ad free if you get uh, the other service. Yeah. So it would be like a Tubi or a Pluto or something like that. Got it. Got it. Uh, so uh, UK Culture Secretary Oliver Dowden wrote a letter to Netflix asking for a disclaimer before the Crown to make it clear that this is a fictionalized account. Netflix declined the request. In a statement to Deadline, quote, Netflix said, uh, uh, quote, we have always presented the Crown as a drama and we have every confidence our members understand it is a work of fiction that's broadly based on historical events. Good on you. Good on you, Netflix. I didn't know that it was it wasn't factual. I haven't seen it at all. Now I really want to see it. <laughs> because it's fictional? <laughs> well, that way there's actually going to be like real dramatic stuff instead of just being like, and then she waited for the prime minister for three days. And then we just watch that. Which I don't want to watch. For three days. Yeah. There's three episodes of her mm -hmm. just sitting there. Yeah. It's real time. No, it's not like I that. I mean, I, I like Netflix's response here, which is, hey, man, it's television. Uh, unless we say it's a documentary. It's fictionalized. It's always fictionalized, whether it's 1600s or 1900s or the 21st century. Uh, it's uh, I, I think our people are smart enough. We're not going to get it would be easy enough for them to be like, yeah, fine. Just put a slap up a, a warning and make this go away. But they're, they're kind of planting their flag in the ground. Hulu released its co-watching watch party feature to all subscribers, whether you're on the ad supported or the commercial free tier. Clicking on the watch party icon when viewing an on-demand show in Hulu gives you a link you can share to watch the program with up to seven other Hulu subscribers. Watch party includes an integrated chat, feature was originally released as a test for the commercial free subscribers in may a uh, couple of interesting tweaks here if you pause it doesn't pause the movie for the others uh but when you return you can either choose to stay behind them or click to catch up and get back in sync uh they are of course not the only one to do a watch party amazon twitch hbo plex instagram facebook all launched co-watching features this year and of course uh netflix is probably the most famous and it's not even theirs that's a third party uh that offers uh co-watching for netflix and there's a lot of third-party services do this for others as well um i'm 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 certain I, I already asked this but have any of you guys used this or any of these services we use the netflix third-party one to watch a a thing on netflix once and 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 dude you're like uh, check that off the bucket list yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Amazon Fire TV cubes can be used oh, with a webcam for video chats. You'll have to find a supported webcam and plug it into the micro USB port, meaning you'll also need an adapter. But calls can be made to the Echo Show or any other phone or tablet with the Alexa app running. Fire TV will also be able to answer spoken questions about unrelated things like the weather without interrupting video playback by showing the answer in a small overlay not uh, on the screen. And uh, Amazon Fire TV's news app is getting content from 12 local U.S. TV stations with another 90 to be added next year. 
Yeah. Um, nifty new things for the fire. Do, do, any, do you still use the fire TV stick, Ryan? Uh, you know what? I didn't for many years. And then, uh, I put, I had a TV that wasn't being used and I put it in the hallway. You, you know, the layout of my house, that, yeah, yeah. that little hallway up at the top of the stairs, we just leaned it against the wall. And now we all cuddled together. It's as though every room in our house is too big and we're all too spread out. So we watch shows cuddled in like it's the 1950s leaning in on this television where it plays on that fire TV stick i has what about you uh, i do not have a fire stick anymore i gave it away because it was like a little freebie um i i like i like this idea of adding the webcam for this particular especially when people are separated you can actually have hopefully web chats and things i just don't want to have zoom on my tv that's really yeah. not something i want to see uh, finally, Comcast will offer CBS All Access as part of its Xfinity X1 pay TV offering. I remember years ago, Brian and I were stunned, stunned that Netflix would be offered through Xfinity X1. Uh, but CBS All Access is now just one of many. X1 already now offers Hulu, Spotify, Peacock, Netflix, Prime Video, and YouTube Premium. Uh, essentially, Comcast will add the cost of the service to your cable TV bill. So you pay just the one bill, and of course, you can watch the app on the X1 box. Awesome. All right, let's get to some dispatches from the front. Got an email from Cliff who said, following up on my email from last week, I have gone to a few Fathom Events presentations of bands, Broadway shows, opera, et cetera, et cetera. However, when Fathom Events does it, they are in theaters without the premium sound system or they are not sound mixed to take advantage of surround sound. All the Fathom Events productions I have gone to were very disappointing because of that. The sound was lackluster at best. I would eagerly pay a premium price for a concert presentation done right. Thanks for following up on that, Cliff. So yeah, that makes sense why you're like, man, give me some real concerts with real good sound here instead of shoving it in the in the extra one because back in the day, you didn't have room for the good stuff. Uh, Zeke writes in with a thought that I, I don't think we've really poked too far into. Uh, he says, now it's cheaper to go to the theater than stay at home, I think. Long time writing, first time listening. My wife has been wanting to watch Mulan the whole year, but I scoffed, scoffed, I say, at paying an additional $30 for a movie on a service I've already paid for. Now, over the last couple of months, my family has started a family movie night tradition where we watch a movie none of us have ever seen. It breaks the monotony, gets the kids excited. First movie was Over the Moon on Netflix, and we did the popcorn nachos hot dogs etc from our own supplies it was a big hit and everyone enjoyed the experience movie wasn't that bad either over the past couple of months we started ordering out food like pizza or mcdonald's for movie night with mulan now being added to disney's regular catalog my wife has proposed that we order red lobster 100 plus dollars <laughs> now i think the movie theater experience might be a cheaper option i'm hoping this is a one-off situation but i'm curious if anyone else is having similar situations and thinks it's cheaper to go to a movie theater now you know what you, uh, there, there may be luxury creep that, that that's happening in there. Can't get that red lobster quality in the theater. Can't do it. It's impossible. <laughs> it's very rare it's a, to get lobster in a theater. Not impossible though. Uh, there are a few places, but it's still pricey. Um, yeah, you got to go. Uh, you got to go. Uh, apples to oranges. Uh, comparing there, Zeke. Like you, you would have to find a theater that served you lobster to be able to tell whether you're actually saving money or not. Uh, and then we got a tweet. From Achille, who said, I assume there will be an episode of Spoiler in Time on this. Yes. And pointed to a Lifetime TV tweet. Mark your calendars. Lifetime and Kentucky Fried Chicken have partnered for a Lifetime original mini movie you don't want to miss. A Recipe for Seduction, starring Mario Lopez as the Colonel, premiering Sunday at noon. <laughs> this is amazing. I hope it's fun and funny, and and there's no reason it can't be, uh, uh, despite the fact that it's an ad. I wonder just how many a mini movie is. They I said really it's hope. ten minutes, oh, ten, that's a, ten or fifteen that's minutes. That's a YouTube video. This is a very long advertisement you will be watching. <laughs> yeah, I really hope that they 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 play it straight. They treat it like it's a lifetime drama, and everyone's chewing the scenery. But none of this, you know, tongue in cheek stuff. It should just full on be a lifetime movie because that's again another piece of show. Just it's, it's yeah. so bad. It's a see, he has a secret recipe, according to the. <laughs> um, that's just what on the poster. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go, folks. That's it for Court Killers. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I as Actar, uh, where can people find not only the best food YouTube show in the spite category, but everything else you do? Uh, go to twitter.com slash IAS. That's I Y A Z, where I promote stuff. But don't forget to go 
and go watch that Spike Kitchen show. We're 19 subscribers away from actually having youtube.com slash whatever because I need to have 100 subscribers and you guys are awesome. There's only been, there's a total of five minutes of video on two episodes. You can watch it over and over again because it's amazing. You'll learn it's, how to make an, eggs. It's an easy catch coffee. up binge. And not only that, but there's a really, really catchy song in the second episode that helps Ooh. you along with coffee. It happens to be in Japanese, but that's a whole other thing. That's fine. That's, that's not fine. a joke. Looking... That's real. Are you uh, are you having any movement on the person you're trying to get to take this channel over? Uh, slight. So if you guys don't know about the show, the show is fueled by Spike. Somebody else should be making their own, you know who you are, your own cooking channel, but they're not. So they have, I've been chatting with this person and they're, they're, they're getting closer because the, the coffee song really got to them. <laughs> <laughs> really got him. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. uh, third time's a charm. I bet after the next episode, you you push him over the edge. Yes. Thank you. Our website is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. We're live on twitch.tv slash night attack. Also carried on diamondclub.tv Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We'll see you again next time. Hey, Tom Merritt. Yes, Brian Brushwood. Know who I love even more than my own children? Your other children no not my wife i know what you're saying i love our five dollar patrons these are the people that keep us loud live and independent thank you so much five dollar patrons you know what i love them more than not life itself because then i'd be dead and i couldn't appreciate them but really 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 close and i'm so thankful that they are here to make this show happen thank you so much to all of our five dollar a month patrons you guys are wizards you're champions you, you're heroes Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>